Good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Cook, and on behalf of my Capstone team members, including Pamela Alabaster, Carlos Abreu, Anna Dangler, Eliza Sheckler, our TA Emily Briggs, and our esteemed advisor, Kizzy Charles Guzman, I'm pleased to present our summer Capstone project, Sustainability Reporting for the Natural Resources Defense Council. Our presentation today will include an overview of our client, NRDC, a summary of our project scope and research methodology, a discussion of key challenges faced throughout the project, an overview of our findings and trends in sustainability reporting, the team's assessment of sustainability reporting frameworks, our recommendations and suggestions for implementation, and finally, a summary of our conclusions. The Natural Resources Defense Council is a leading environmental organization that focuses on litigation and advocacy. The organization has over 400 staff in six offices across the U.S. and one office in Beijing, China. NRDC has over 100 million in annual revenue and approximately 86% of their annual budget goes to fund programs focusing on key environmental issues such as global warming, clean energy, defending wildlife, and more. Beyond programs and fundraising expenses, just under 7% of NRDC's annual budget is directed towards administration costs. Given resource constraints, Anthony Guerrero, the Director of Operations at NRDC, invited the Capstone team to identify the most appropriate sustainability reporting framework for the organization. Sustainability reporting is the practice of measuring and disclosing an organization's environmental, economic, and social impacts and performance. NRDC informed the Capstone team that they wanted to report on their sustainability practices and disclose their environmental impacts, including CO2 emissions, energy and water consumption, waste, and materials use. To achieve these goals, the team assessed standards that considered the sustainability impacts of NRDC's programs and operations. Our ultimate goal was to position NRDC as a sustainability leader in their sector. Our project methodology included five steps which led to our recommendation. For data collection, the team divided research into the following areas. NRDC sustainability performance and readiness to report, best practices, and reporting standards and frameworks. Primary sources of data and information included academic papers, sustainability and annual reports, NRDC's internal and external data, and more. For benchmarking best practices, we focused on three NGO case studies, as well as general research on best practices in sustainability reporting. The team also conducted interviews with NRDC's leadership team, as well as outside experts. For analysis of standards, the team developed criteria by which to evaluate each framework, both independently and against one another. And finally, a data gap analysis was conducted to analyze NRDC's existing organizational processes and environmental data against various frameworks. Each of these steps was critical to the formulation of our recommendation, which will be discussed at the end of the presentation. There were several key challenges that were faced throughout the project, including developing a comprehensive understanding of sustainability reporting and formulating a sensible recommendation under a compressed project timeline of just 11 weeks. Another key challenge was defining a common understanding of terms used to define the scope of the project. NRDC's interest in environmental reporting versus sustainability reporting and defining their priorities for each was addressed at several points throughout the project. Different expectations around what encompassed sustainability and whether the framework should focus on environmental versus social and economic measurements was something that came up both in interviews and ongoing meetings with the client. Seventeen interviews were conducted with NRDC's leadership team to identify, analyze, and understand the organization's priorities for sustainability reporting. The most common theme identified from staff interviews was that NRDC has a responsibility to walk the walk through its own sustainability performance and reporting. Our initial findings on sustainability reporting trends uncovered, uncovered some compelling reasons for why NRDC should report. For example, reporting can help identify new opportunities and efficiencies improve organizational performance, and enhance the reputation of the organization. Further, it helps NRDC to differentiate itself from other NGOs 
in a way that is attractive to donors and new recruits. Finally, it provides greater transparency and accountability to NRDC stakeholders. Shown here, last year more than 6,000 organizations reported on their sustainability performance, a significant increase from just a decade ago at 1,200. Today, it is no longer a question of whether to report, it's a question of how and what to report. With this in mind, we developed criteria to help frame this question for NRDC. To evaluate the variety of standards identified, we established five essential criteria to determine the most appropriate framework for NRDC. These criteria included the following, that it is credible and widely accepted, has low cost barriers in regard to fees, certification, and implementation costs, there are reliable examples of successful adoption by NGOs, the standard incorporates environmental, social, and economic impacts. And finally, it is consistent in its ability to compare performance internally and externally to outside organizations. The following matrix compares the nine primary sustainability reporting frameworks against the five criteria created by the team. The left column of the chart highlights the criteria and the top row incorporates the reporting frameworks. A plus designates that the standard fully meets the criteria, a minus that it does not, and a plus minus that it only partially meets the criteria or has insufficient information. In reviewing the chart from left to right, we see that GRI is the only reporting framework that meets all five criteria. To the right of GRI is the climate registry. This greenhouse gas reporting standard meets three of the criteria, but does not incorporate social or economic impacts and despite being credible, is not yet widely accepted. Among the nine primary standards assessed, we determined that the Global Reporting Initiative was the best reporting framework for NRDC. Our recommendation was based on the following. GRI is the most widely used global reporting standard, with over 40% of reporting organizations using the framework as shown in this chart. It is the most comprehensive framework with 30 unique indicators for addressing environmental performance and 45 indicators for measuring social and economic impacts. Further, it offers supplemental performance measurements specifically for NGOs. It offers extensive publications and training support tools and it's free to all users. The only costs involved are for application level checks and third-party validation, both of which are not required to report. And lastly, we believe that NRDC can implement this standard with existing resources and with currently available information at GRI's first reporting level of C. The three NGOs that we decided to benchmark sustainability reporting practices against include Oxfam International, Amnesty International UK, and Ceres, the Coalition for Environmentally Responsible Economies. The important thing to note from these examples is that there are multiple ways to approach GRI. Despite differences in reporting levels and organizational size, each completed effective reports using a variety of best practices that were shared with NRDC in our recommendation. For year one, we recommend that NRDC identify and invest in the institutional structures that are required for reporting. This includes convening a cross-organizational sustainability committee to work collaboratively to engage NRDC stakeholders, define what sustainability indicators are most relevant for the organization, and prepare for data collection. In year two, we recommend that NRDC set a reporting date and timetable to develop content for GRI and any additional publications where the report's information will be highlighted. NRDC will first report to GRI and then to the public, preferably through their annual report. For year three, we suggest that NRDC consider an every other year reporting frequency and use this year to assess the quality and effectiveness of the reporting process and their sustainability performance. This feedback loop will help refine their approach to future reports and facilitate discussion around the costs and benefits of reporting. They should then readjust the reporting strategy accordingly and set a new timeline to report. In conclusion, Based on our research, analysis, and findings, we believe that sustainability reporting can provide strategic value to NRDC 
by fostering a process to drive continued operational efficiencies and improvements. As we've shown, sustainability reporting has become mainstream among organizations and leading NGOs today, and GRI has emerged as the gold standard for reporting. In order for NRDC to successfully adopt the standard, we believe that management support is key. And finally, we believe that NRDC can meet the requirements to report and distinguish itself as a leader in sustainability reporting among NGOs. Thank you.